Hello and welcome back to Fix More Waste Less, where I try and fix broken electronics and keep them out of the landfill. Today we have a PlayStation 2 Slim that needs a little bit of help. The PS2 Slims are an overall nice console. They're much smaller and thinner than the larger fat models that originally came out. Some people do prefer this version for its size, although I'm not a big fan of the top loading disc tray. I think it's a little cheaper. It probably was cheaper to produce for Sony, but I think it makes the console feel cheaper overall. Another issue is that it requires an external power brick to power the console. As we know, those don't always convey with the console, but at least it is easier to replace if one dies than having to remove an internal power supply. Though, if you do have power issues in your original PS2, check out this video linked here. Luckily, this listing does come with the external power supply as well as composite cables to connect it to a TV. Now the listing says that it doesn't read discs. It claims that's the only issue with it. So first thing we need to do is get it plugged in, powered on, and test that out. And with everything connected, we do have power as well as a signal to the TV. So far, so good. The next thing we need to do is put in a disc and see what the problem is. Does it read it all? Does it spin it all? Uh, there's a number of issues that can plague these slim PS2s, their lasers being one of the main ones. Let's listen and see if we get any indicators of what the problem might be. Hmm. And if you ignore the whooshing sound of the main screen, you'll notice the disc doesn't spin at all. The PS2 doesn't even attempt to read the disc, so... That tells me that the problem might not be with the laser, it might be with some other hardware malfunction that plagues these PS2 Slims. But before I go any further, I do want to test a different disc just to make sure because the Bounty Hunter disc was a bit scratched up. Um, it's always good to double check everything before you start to tear things apart. But still, we get no spinning disc. But then here is where I discover the real issue with this PlayStation 2. Yeah, this just needs to be held down. Trying. I can hear it. Okay. So with me holding it down, it does spin the disc and it does eventually read the disc. Now that struck me as odd, so why would it not just spin automatically with the lid closed? Why do I need to press down on it? And as it turns out, it's because the slim model has two sensors that detect when the lid is shut and they're not being activated when I shut this lid. Apparently it's a pretty common fault and thankfully also a relatively easy fix. So now that we have the diagnosis done, let's see if we can fix it. And the first thing we need to do is take it apart. There are a couple of little covers over the screws on the bottom that we need to remove. Then we can get to the screws. This model has the warranty sticker still covering the last screw. That's nice, at least it lets us know that no one's been in here. Unfortunately, I do have to break it in order to get into the console, but you know, we're not voiding any warranties because this is long out of warranty period. And the top shell is held on with a few little clamps, so just be careful as you try and pry it apart. You don't want to break anything. Plastic this old does become brittle, and that would just be a headache that you don't want to deal with. Fortunately, there are no ribbon cables attaching the top shell to the bottom, so at least you don't have to worry about anything like that. And with the top shell removed, we can see the very clean looking inside of our PlayStation 2 Slim. Overall, I'd say it actually looks very good, very clean. And now with it plugged back in, I can continue on with the testing. I want to test these two sensors and make sure that there's a way to fix them, a way to actually make them trigger when the lid is closed. I'll try and zoom in and show there's a sensor here in the front right, and the other sensor is back here in the 
middle, I would say, of the back with the shell off. And when I push those two down, you can see that the disk drive does activate. The laser comes forward and it believes that the lid is closed, so it looks for a disk. Now I'll put a disk in and just show you what happens when you push both of those down and the disk spins. So now we know that that seems to be the at least the initial problem. There could be other problems with the laser not working, but at least now we know that activating those two sensors will get the disk to spin up. Let's get the system back together and see if that's enough to get it working. Now that we have the case back on, I test it out and see that it does work without needing a hand resting on the back, which is a good thing. That's how it should work. Um, as it turned out, the only thing wrong with it was it not activating the sensor in the back when the lid was closed. Hopefully this shows that it's not always a you know, catastrophic failure that's plaguing your machine if it's not working. Sometimes it really just needs to be opened up, cleaned out, one little piece here and there tweaked, and you can get it back working. I know that's not always going to be the case, but at least in this situation, it was a simple fix. I know the PlayStation 2 Slims kind of are known to have disc reading errors. Sometimes it's the laser mechanism inside, sometimes it's something else. It can be the sensors, um, and it was. And as I go through and clean out the inside of the PS2, I, I do um, you know hit those sensors with some isopropyl alcohol and compressed air just to help clean them out. I think it was just dust or dirt or grit or something in there that was preventing it from fully activating when the lid closed and me pushing on it just broke through that grime. Um, but we can help it out a little bit by cleaning out the sensors a little bit more. So now that we have a working PlayStation 2 Slim, I will clean it up and get it back out there. All right, I wanted to add that this is the little hinge that activates the rear sensor. So if that is broken on yours, it might be a reason why it's not activating it. The front sensor is way, way up here. So that little button right there is the front sensor. You can see when it opens, closes, See how it activates it when it closes. Right. Now we just need to get the rest of it cleaned up and fully reassembled. This console will be good to go. Alright, thanks for watching. Overall, that was a pretty simple repair. I know that's not always the case, and sometimes other issues do come up, but I hope you learned something useful from this video. And if you did, it would be useful if you liked and subscribed to the channel. Alright, I'll see you next time as we continue to learn how to fix broken electronics so that we can keep them out of the landfill and around for future generations to enjoy.